Okay, I am recording. Okay. Oh, I just started. Have you been this whole time? No, I just started after you said you just started. Okay. I was lying. I never started. You piece of crap. Welcome to the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine. And now here's your host... Big Anglovich. I got five pieces of candy. And Rich Outfield. I got a rock. Oh, no, I was lying. Now, now I actually started. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. Welcome to another episode of the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine. Here at my right side, and by right side, I mean like, actually, it's the left side because it. It's the left coast way over that direction, right? That's what they call it. So on my left side is Rish Outfield, way over on the left, uh, about a thousand miles to the left. Say hello to the folks at home, Rish Outfield. Hello. Okay, that's all for your contribution for today. <laughs> You're not far off. Welcome to the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine's Halloween special. It's our October edition and uh, we've got a little something something for you. I guess it wasn't the end of your contribution because you wrote today's story. Is that correct, Rush Outfield? Why do you seem so surprised? Oh, I forget. You haven't written in years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm so amazed. I, 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 people do that? Really? Like people actually write things. They don't just like pretend to write or like avoid writing but people actually do write things sometimes uh, apparently people do I, <laughs> the, those pesky people that we're always hearing about that actually do the things that they set out to do they achieve their goals oh. really who needs people like that yeah i think i might hate those kind of people it ruins the whole grading <laughs> curve <laughs> curve busters yeah, I think that's what people used to call nerds back in the day. I, I remember I had a teacher who once said that, they, that they called nerds curve busters because, uh, you know, you have that curve. And they were the stupid one at the end that, that made the bell wider by doing so well. <sighs> I Sometimes I think I need to be one of those people, but then I decide against it. But you, sir, were a curve buster for today's episode, am I right? I, I, I don't know. I've never considered myself a curve buster. Monster. You wrote a story. Yeah. <laughs> so that we could have a Halloween episode. and. Uh, oh, yeah, I suppose that was probably worth it then. Well, we'll leave that decision to the, uh, the audience. That yeah, way. we'll just let the listeners decide whether you should have or should not have. Once they're done listening, they'll be like, oh, damn it, I wish he hadn't written this. Because then I could have my half hour back. <laughs> it's like when my nephews watch an episode of SpongeBob or worse. Uh -huh. Yeah, they'll watch an episode of Pokemon. And I, I can tell that they've gotten dumber in the 30 minutes <laughs> that they've been watching it. It's kind of like binge drinking in your teens or something like that. It's like, wow, the amount of brain cells you just exterminated pretty substantial but that's what i'm here for yay okay so what is our story called <laughs> it is called increasingly scarier stories to tell in the dark <laughs> no really what is it called well that's the title but it isn't a story so much as it is a uh, an audio drama. And it isn't an audio drama so much as it is a barbecue sketch. Oh, okay. And it isn't a barbecue sketch so much as it is a campfire sketch. It isn't a campfire sketch so much as it is increasingly scary stories to tell in the dark. Wait, is that what it was called? It's scarier stories. Oh, increasingly scarier and scarier stories that get curiouser and curiouser. Does that word bother you like it does me, curiouser? <laughs> curiouser, it does, actually. But scarier does not. Is it a real word? Like, can you actually say curiouser? Or is that like one of those things like Brits say it, but not 
Americans or something? It does seem like something Brits would say, but I don't know that it's wrong. It just more curious, more and more curious sounds so much better than curiouser and curiouser. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we've got a curiouser and curiouser barbecue campfire sketch for you to listen to, folks. About the author. About the author, uh, Rish Outfield is the co-host of the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine, which you are listening to now. The multiple award-losing co-host of... That's the- right. <laughs> I guess we'll do a cast list after, so I don't need to talk about that. All right, so I guess there's nothing uh, nothing to say before we jump into the story. We're going to just go ahead and, and lay it on you. Um, scarier and scarier stories to tell in the dark just run it okay (laughs) increasingly scarier stories to tell in the dark the fire's going great now guys not too smoky either thanks took you long enough hey some of the wood was wet That's your excuse for everything, Carrie. You could have helped, you know. When we first got here, you told me, you get the fire, I'll get wood. And that didn't strike you as a joke, maybe? Boy, it's nice being out among nature again. A crackling fire to keep away the dark. People I've known all my life to keep my fears away. Yeah, it's a pretty fine night. Just enough breeze, just enough stars. What fears are you talking about, Christine? I don't know. The woods always struck me as kind of creepy. Oh, come on. It's not creepy. It's romantic. Campfire, crickets, good friends. (laughs) Friends is kind of the opposite of romantic, Carrie. I don't know. There was Ross and Rachel, and Chandler and Monica, and Joey and Rachel, and Rachel and Paolo... Rachel and Bruce Willis. Pretty much Rachel and anybody. What are you talking about? My niece, Rachel? She's only 11. It was a show. You seriously never heard of... No, Gerald's right. Haven't you ever heard of the Friend Zone? It's like the Twilight Zone, only scarier. Actually, that term isn't in vogue anymore. It was invented by angry young men who didn't want a woman in their life if sex wasn't involved. What, the Twilight Zone? No, I thought it was some old show in the 80s with, like, killer dolls and mannequins and hitchhikers and stuff. It was. Christine doesn't know what she's talking about. I'll have you know, I watched the heck out of the Twilight Zone. And it was from the 70s. (laughs) Now that was a scary show. Wasn't that scary? You ever see that one movie, Mask, where Cher plays Eric Stoltz's mother? They were having sex during the production of that film. Well, he was in the deformed mask makeup? Yikes, that is scary. No, not as scary as being out here alone in the woods is. Let's throw some more branches on the fire. Well, you know what would be scarier than being out here alone? Being out in the woods not alone. What do you mean? I mean... If there was, you know, somebody else out here with us. Yeah, yeah, like Chandler from Friends. God, I hated that guy. I liked Chandler. He'd do this thing where he'd sort of stammer while twisting his head all... What was that? Did did you hear something? What? Where? (laughs) I'm just messing with you. (laughs) A scary night like tonight? You imagine anything could be out there. Anything. Like what? Like, the last time I went hunting with my grandpa, it was really cold, so we both got in the front of his old pickup truck to get warm. He only had an AM radio, but I turned it on for something to do, and all of the stations were static. Except one. Okay. Well, it was this creepy song by the police. I forget what it was called called it goes uh 
It doesn't sound familiar. Did, did the police do Jukebox Hero? That was Journey. What, did they do the one about the girl's telephone number written above the public urinal? I think so, but this wasn't that song. It's an eerie one. Wait, wait. Are the police the ones that sing about the environment and, and like, social causes and stuff? Yep, that's them. Always singing about the struggles in Northern Ireland and the ozone layer. Maybe, but not this song. This song's all about, like, death and... and We don't know the song. We don't know the song. All right, well, just take my word for it. It it was was unsettling. So Grandpa turns it off, says he's got a bad feeling about this hunting trip, and we pack it in and go home. Because of a song on the radio? It's a really creepy song. It's like... Stop it. Anyway, the point of the story is, right after that, my grandfather died. Right after that? Oh, holy shit. Well, about four months after that, yeah. And? And what? Did that song play at his funeral? Or the only song that ever played on that radio was that song? Or did the doctor say that it was... No, it was just a scary song, that's all. Oh, okay. Well, I've got a scary story about a song. Did it involve the woods on a night just like tonight? Well, no, but... It... Then keep it to yourself. Aw, let him tell it. Thank you. Did you know that a pair of crazy old sisters discovered, just a few years ago, that the copyright to Happy Birthday to You was available? That it had been believed to be in the public domain for all this time, but the rights weren't tied up with anybody. So... These deranged old bats scrape their tea and doily money together, and they buy the rights to the birthday song. Can you do that? Apparently, yes. So that whenever somebody sang that song, in a movie or on television or on Carrie's haunted radio station... Cute. Well, they owed these two old ladies a check. They became insanely rich, almost immediately, because... But you know, everybody sings that song, and they use it in, like, a hundred movies and TV shows a year. What's the scary part? The the scary part is, they didn't write the song. They didn't have anything to do with the song. They just had this harebrained scheme to claim the song, and until a judge finally overturned the copyright ruling, and the sisters were found hanging from the attic of their ramshackle family cottage... There was this huge social injustice that most people weren't even aware of, surely inspiring copycats to do the same exact... Carrie, I apologize. I should have let you stop him from telling it. See, I told you. We're only telling scary stories, true stories, about things that go perfect with a night like this. Agreed? Agreed? But you didn't find that scary? Terrifying. That reminds me... I came out here a few months back with a guy. Who? Which guy? You don't know him. So, what's his name? I'm I'm curious. That's beside the point, but it was Wyndham Walker. He's a podcaster. What's a podcaster? It's like a scientist. What kind of scientist? Particle physics, environmental studies, longer-lasting perfume, that sort of thing. You were dating a scientist? When? It didn't go anywhere, okay? He had this radio show thing that he kept doing instead. It wasn't an AM radio, was it? How many stations did it get? I don't remember. It was all super boring. He was always going on about creative parsecs and commons awards and all this. Okay, but but what happened? The, The scary thing. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Gerald. So anyway, we were trying to go to sleep when I hear this sound out in the woods... What kind of sound? Something unsettling. It was unlike anything I'd ever heard before. Like a witch giving some kind of signal to another witch. Huh. What did it sound like? Like... Creepy, huh? 
It's not that creepy. I mean, it's not... Well, it was at the time. A minute later, I hear another one somewhere else in the woods, like a call and answer. Like a mating call? Yeah, maybe. Anyway, it turns out it was an owl. I'll say who? Well, some of them don't. Some of them make sounds like witches casting evil spells. You know, I had a scary experience myself. One time, when I was a little kid, I went camping out in the woods with my dad. And in the middle of the night, I feel something rubbing against the side of the tent. Now, I tried not to scream, but I was sure it was going to come in and get me. Did it? No, otherwise I wouldn't be telling this story, would I? What was it? Turns out, it was a skunk. It didn't spray me, but if it had, I'd have been out there, covered in that stuff, until we could find some place to hose me off. Yikes, that is scary. No, it isn't. I got that story beat. I went up to the Butikofer Pass with this girl I met at summer camp when I was 16 or What's seven. the Butikofer Pass? <laughs> it's a makeout spot where the teenagers go to get it on. <laughs> Have you ever been there? Uh, no, actually. Anyway, this babe is really hot. And she's really raring to go. And we have a good time. Probably the best sexual experience of my whole oh, life. Oh, is this the hook story? The hook story? The hook gets stuck in the car door, you know? No, this or is... Or the one where you go off for help and something is scraping the roof of the car and it turns out your head's been cut off? Uh, no, this really happened to me. It... Aw, I can't tell it so you understand. It turns out the girl was my cousin, just moved into town. Ew, yuck, Carrie. Only time I ever fainted, so yeah, it's pretty damn scary. How could you have a cousin you didn't know about? Well, because my dad and her dad never got along and hadn't spoken in 20 years or something. They had just moved in, like the next town over, and didn't know it. But Carrie... How could you make out with your own cousin? Easy. How could you make out with nobody at all? Hey, that's not fair. My dad was an only child. Guys, keep it down. You're ruining the spooky atmosphere. That's spooky. Right. Sorry. Funny thing is, afterward it sort of made sense. Once I found out, I realized she looked almost exactly like my sister. Holy crap, that is scary. I've got a story for you. Something had happened to me with a lot less incest in it. How much less? This one time, years ago, I went camping in Bulgaria Burton's backyard this time. And we heard this howling in the middle of the night. It was terrifying. Me and Bulg were so scared we were just holding on to each other, crying, sure it was going to get us. Did it get you? No. What were you wearing? Oh, I don't know. Nightgowns or something. Old t-shirts. That's it? You were only wearing t-shirts? Ooh, tell us more. It wasn't like that. We were just friends. A couple of scared teenagers, freaked out of our minds by this horrible sound. So what was it? The sound? It was her neighbor's dog. I guess they had just gotten it fixed that afternoon, poor thing. Ah, Very important to spay and neuter your pets. Absolutely. The more you know and all that. Well, I got your story beat. One time, I was driving home this lady from work. I forget her name. She had a big chin, that's all I remember. Lovely. I'm just saying, I wasn't interested in her. She wasn't interested in you, is more likely. Because she had a big chin. Reese Witherspoon has a big chin. You know... She does. She really does. I had a thing for Reese Witherspoon, though. Oh, (laughs) me too. Especially in that uh, Man in the Moon movie. Right, right. She was just on her way to... uh... Guys, I thought you were telling a scary story. Huh? Something that happened to you? Oh, yeah. I was driving this co-worker home because it was on the way. And we were going around this country road where there weren't any streetlights. When suddenly... Something runs right in front of the car. A deer? A dog? 
Wait, was this the old town road by the shuttered mental institution? That's the one. Oh my god. It was a cat, I'm pretty sure. Just a big cat. But we were stopped there in the road, the windows down, when all of a sudden, either in the distance or nearby, it was difficult to tell in a dark night like that, we hear this person calling. Calling for their cat? Donetta, it calls, long and, 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 and sort of playful almost. Donetta. And the woman from work you were driving home, her name was Donetta? Yes, you're right, I, I think that was it. So the voice was calling her name? Jesus, that is scary. Oh, no, I told it wrong then. I, I think the girl's name was Donetta, but the voice wasn't calling her name. I, I think it was saying Eunice. Sorry. Oh, F you, Gerald. Yeah, you almost had the winner there. Except I surely do. I went fishing with Maraschino Moretto one time, and we built a fire just like this one. Sort of cooking the fish we had caught, and some marshmallows and dog turds or something. And we heard somebody walking around out there, just beyond the tree line. And it wasn't a little sound. It was like somebody deliberately stomping on branches and stuff. So I got scared, right? And sat on the log with Maraschino, worried that it would be something bad, kind of like you and your friend, Christine, only less gay. And then suddenly something jumps out at us. What? What was it? It was Bobby Broughton, naked as the day he was born, sneaking up on us, swinging his dingus around like he was trying to make a propeller out of it. Ugh. Bobby never was right in the head. Yeah, it was worse than that. He got too close to the fire and he, you know, burned off all his... Oh, no. You know, hedges. Uh, his shrubbery. Uh-huh. His jungle foliage. Now I think I heard Maraschino tell that story one time. His, his, his pubes. I meant his pubes. Yeah, I know. Well, it was a scary story. And I just felt like telling it. Yeah, I thought it worked real well, Carrie. Thanks, man. Oh, the smell was unbelievable. It was like... Oh, I thought of one. Another time, I spent the night at Katie Kolakowski's house, and we were in her room, up late, listening to Enrique Iglesias' songs. Remember him? Oh, oh I, I remember. remember. When suddenly, Katie turns off the music. What is it, I say. And she's listening all intently. At the door, she says. And just as she says it, I hear something too. Sort of a scratching sound. Another cat. No, higher up, bigger than a cat, more deliberate. But if a cat stood on its hind legs... Will you let me tell the story, Carrie? Sure, it's just not very scary. Well, it was at the time. We were there, sitting in silence. Oh, what were you wearing? Oh, stop it! It's like two in the morning, and there's definitely something at Katie's bedroom door. And she reaches for it... Because there's a lock on her door, for just this situation, I guess. And right before she presses it, the knob begins to turn. I'm holding my breath, frozen with fear on her floor there. And Katie shrinks back, making this little eeping sound. The door opens, and standing there is... This... thing. Both Katie and I scream. We can't help ourselves. And it's her little brother, Courtney. He's like 12 or 13, and he's... He's got this... Knife? Axe? No, it was a... A sharpened screwdriver. G gun? It was, was it a gun? No. Like a, a, a two-by-four, but with nails pounded into one side? No. Uh, one of those rifles with, like, the knife on the end? What do they call those? A bayonet. Right, right. It, was it a bayonet? No, it... It was a dildo, wasn't it? Wow, you win. Just stop. It was a mask. A Tor Johnson mask. The most terrifying thing you've ever seen. Naked? He was naked, though. It wasn't like that. He was just trying to scare us. Oh. And it worked. 
pretty soon, Katie's dad came running in, all freaked out. Was he naked, though? Yes. Yes, he was. It was the first adult man I'd seen naked. And the last, sadly. I'm joking. He was in his, what do you call it, nightshirt. And he had a golf club he was, I don't know, gonna bash the intruder with. But when he found out it was just his stepson playing a prank, he was furious and told me to call my folks to take me home and marched Courtney off to his room for what sounded like a real whipping. With a golf club? That seems kind of harsh. A little. Well, I I got a much scarier story. Okay, a couple of years back, I was staying at my friend's house in the city. Guy or girl? My friend? A guy. You sure? Was he your cousin? No. You sure? Uh, Reasonably, yeah. So, (laughs) I was just staying there while he was at work. We were going to hang out for the weekend and go see the movie star homes, the handprints in the cement, the sightseeing, the whale watching, that sort of thing. What city was this? Vegas. So, I'm asleep on his couch. When I hear something at the back door, somebody fumbling around, you know, I think it's Rosie come home early, but... Wait, Rosie? I thought this was a male friend of yours. It was. Uh, His last name was Roseman. We called him Rosie. Honest. All right, go on. But it's not Rosie, or Roseman, because the door doesn't open. I hear the knob rattle. I hear the door shaking. Like somebody realized it was locked, but is trying to get in anyway. What did you do? Well, I went into the bathroom to start my day, brush my hair and all that. You didn't go see who it was? Uh, I had pretty bad bed head. Couch head, I guess you'd call it. But yeah, after I was presentable, I went to the back door, unlocked it, and checked to see if anybody was there. And were they? No, nobody was there. You suck at storytelling, Carrie. But as I'm closing the door again, I see it. Blood. All over the door frame. I looked on the door, and there's blood on the knob. Blood on the door like a puddle on the welcome mat. They had a welcome mat on the back door? (laughs) Not after that, no. So... It turned out there had been a stabbing, not only in the neighborhood, but right there on the street. They found the victim in the carport of the house two doors down, totally bled out. Dead. My God. Yeah, told you I had a good one. No, I meant, my God, you just let somebody who needed help bleed to death like that? Well, excuse me, I... I thought we were telling spooky stories of things that happened to us, not stories where we came out as heroes on the other end. Well, she didn't mean it that way, Carrie. I'd have done the same thing. Anybody would have. Okay, you're right. It was just supposed to be a scary story. And it was, Carrie. I was just surprised by how it ended. Rosie was a girl. Yeah, we met online. Sorry. Forget about it. As long as we weren't going out at the time... And she wasn't related to you. Well, actually... Wow, we have really had some chilling experiences between us, guys. Amazing that any of us would ever go camping again. I've got one more story. Probably the best one. Is it incredibly lame? No. Then go ahead. So, what I said before. That wasn't the scariest time I ever had camping. This one time... Two or three years ago, I went out to Landover Latham's cabin to celebrate his not guilty verdict for running over that old lady on the sidewalk on St. Patrick's Day. And we're in the cabin drinking when all of a sudden the car alarm on his truck starts going off. Truck alarm then, not not car alarm. Let me finish. So we go to the window and look out and we thought we saw a shadow like of somebody running away from the car. But it's dark enough we can't say for sure. So he clicks off his alarm, and we hope it was just a raccoon or a wallaby or something, right? That story's nothing. This one time... I'm not finished! A few minutes later, we hear something out there again, 
and he didn't turn on his alarm again, so it didn't go off. But something banged on his truck, something hard and strong. So definitely not a wallaby. Definitely not. What's a wallaby? It's like a dinosaur. So me and Landover go outside, and each of us has one of those big emergency road LED lights. that He had like 16 of them at the cabin, and we go out into the night. Why do they have so many? What? Why do they have so many road lights? Oh, his brother kept stealing them from the 7-Eleven. Landover kept daring him to, even in his letters to prison. But anyway... So, what was it? I'll bet it turned out to be nothing. Oh, it was something all right. You think I'd waste your time with this story if it turned out to be nothing? Yes. Yes. So we go out there, by Landover's truck, pointing our lamps around, trying to figure out what was out there. And we hear this sound around the bed of the truck. We both go each way, like, to surprise it. And we shine our lights on it at the same time. And it's a Frankenstein. Oh, what? A a Frankenstein. Big and and, and sort of green with these nail things sticking out of its neck. A Frankenstein. Yeah. Just standing there, its eyes looking back and forth between us like it didn't know who to kill first. What did you do? I ran back into the cabin, slammed the door behind me. It had this little lock on it, a hook and eye kind of thing, but it held. Landover's on the other side, screaming and begging me to open the door, but I I just... Gerald, you left your best friend out there? Well, he was my friend. I wouldn't say he was my best friend. Do you guys have a best friend, somebody you think of above all the others, or do you have sort of a group of friends who are all about equal... Gerald, finish the damn story. What happened to your friend with the Frankenstein? Monster. Frankenstein's monster. That's the proper term. I just couldn't let that go. Sorry. What do you mean, the proper term? I mean, people are always confusing the mad scientist that created Frankenstein with the monster he created. Ah, whoops. I just went and did it. Frankenstein is the name of the scientist. The monster he created is not called that. Well, what's he called then? I don't know. He called something else. So you're saying that movie with a Frankenstein on the cover is not named after him, but the man who made him? I guess. But the dude on the cover, if he's the one with the scars and the flat-topped head... I can't believe I'm hearing all this small talk about scientists when Gerald still... Hey, you dated a scientist. You should be on my side. He wasn't really a scientist. The point is, Gerald hasn't finished his, frankly, amazing, scary story. Thank you, Christine. You think it's amazing? Amazing, as in unbelievable, yes. Look, if he can make up a story, then I can make up a story, too. What? You don't believe me? Okay, I've got one, and it has tons of sex and gore in it. Guys, I I didn't make it up. I was there. Sure. It took Landover Latham as its common law wife, and nobody ever saw him again. I saw him at Walmart, like, a month ago. That's not the point. Wait, did you hear something? Something out in the woods, you mean? Yeah, something. I don't hear anything. Will you be quiet and listen? No, I... Okay, I definitely heard that. What is it? Guys, I'm scared. Me too. (laughs) More scared. I'm more scared than both of you. Oh yeah? I'm about to pee my pants here. Well, I'm about prairie dogging it here. Guys, guys, we're all scared. Let's not argue about it. Let's just figure out what it is. Could only be a deer. Yeah. Could be a wolf, too. Or a bear. They say there's bears out here sometimes. The kind that crave human... Maybe it's just a woodchuck or a raccoon. No need to... Could be a Dracula. Oh, come on, Gerald. A Dracula? Everybody knows there's only one. People. (laughs) People, please. No need to be alarmed. I was just passing by. I didn't mean to scare you. Oh, we weren't that scared. Well, I I wasn't anyway. Gerald, can I borrow some of your toilet paper? It's in my pack. Uh, Just a minute. What are you doing out here, mister? Were you lost? In a way... I was nearby, and I saw your fire. 
couldn't help but hear you telling your scary stories. Oh, they weren't that scary. Oh, right. Nah. I liked hearing them. And I wondered if you'd let me tell one. A scary story? <laughs> sure, stranger. Okay, get comfortable, because this one is really going to get under your skin. That'd be a nice change. Yeah, sure would. So, this is something that really happened to me a long time ago in this very stretch of woods. Back then, I was as carefree as you are. With everyday concerns, worries, a pulse. But one night, I came out here with a couple of friends. Wait, did, and did you say a pulse? Never mind that. Just listen to the tale of my last night out here. Well, well alive, alive anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it was breezy, but not cold. A night much like this one. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the story, everybody. Did you enjoy the story, Michelle Phil? I did, but I, I should be disqualified from answering that question. Well, you see, that's kind of weird, because I would expect you to not have enjoyed it, because you're such an anti rich Outfield. Generally, when you do one of these stories, somewhere at least halfway through editing, you will get a hold of me and be like, hey, I, I think we're going to have to not use this story after all because it's just, it's not funny. I've been editing it and I just, all the jokes are falling flat and I think it's terrible. I, let's just skip this one. And we'll, oh, shoot. I had Renee Chambliss and Marshall Latham do voices for it. Oh, now I'm, I'm required to use I don't want to use it. <laughs> So I'm kind of surprised to hear you say that you actually enjoyed it and you feel like you should be disqualified. Interesting. I, I'm going to cut out everything you just said. <laughs> just consider yourself warned. Uh, I, I, yeah, I do want to thank Renee Chambliss and Marshall Latham for lending their voices to this episode. Uh, and you as well. Oh, well, thanks. I don't know if I deserve it, but uh, I guess I did lend my voice to it. I don't know if it counts since I'm one of the hosts of the show. Does it really count to say that I lent it? Oh, uh, I guess, yeah, there, there's no lending going on with our show. But I wrote the sketch with you in mind. It was like, oh, hey, well, Big Yankovich will do this part. This will be great. And it was. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I found it to be really, uh, really funny. I really liked the uh, the story. And I remember at one point... <laughs> kind of losing it <laughs> everything struck me as too funny and i kind of uh, had had to uh take a moment so that i could uh get myself back in control and, and move on I suppose maybe we'll hear that in the outtakes at the end of the show or i don't know but uh Anytime something like that happens, that make that's when I know you know we've got something good. When you when you have a it's it's like the Saturday Night Live sketches where the guys are doing it and then it, they can't go on. They've they've caused themselves to laugh. Seems like audiences always <laughs> love that part when when the actors lose it live on the air. Yeah, I don't. There is something that about that the, the audience just goes crazy when they break. I don't like it myself. There were some cast members like Jimmy Fallon who would just break all the time. Every single episode there would be some time. And it just, it, to me, it, it really, it, you know, it's kind of like somebody who falls down in every single movie that they do. It's <laughs> like, oh, that's his thing. You know, it was funny the first time I saw him fall down, but it's not funny anymore. Yeah, I guess if it's happening every time, then it, then it ceases to be interesting. It's only great if it happens only every once in a while. But of course, for us, we're not live, so it's not a, not a problem. No. And uh, yeah, when I, when I find myself laughing uh, in the middle of one of those sketches, I think it's a good thing. 
uh, that means that there's something funny going on. Hopefully the <laughs> the audience agrees. Yeah, it's it's hard to say since I'm just sitting here in a room all by myself talking into a microphone with no one else around. Hey, so let me uh, briefly tell you where this came from. You already know, but oh well. This summer, I tried to go up to the family cabin for a bunch of writing retreats, you know? I, for me, it was more editing. I had audiobooks that I had recorded, and it's no fun to edit audio, as you well know. <laughs> but I would go up to the cabin where there's no distractions, no internet, no telephone, no TV or whatever, and, it's, and I'd make myself do it. Not a single luxury? It's... Do you know what it's kind of like? It's kind of like Robinson Crusoe. As it, primitive as can be, yeah. Okay, yeah, you and I are definitely on the same page there. <laughs> and one night, and this was uh, the end of August, I was reading, and I heard something out the window. I couldn't tell what it was, so I opened the window, and it was an owl, but it wasn't an owl going, ooh, ooh which we hear all the time, or at least... No, you did too. Yeah. Yeah, there was owls like right outside my house. Uh, yeah. My old house that I would hear all the time in the, in the night. Like we would go, like after recording episodes, we'd be like walking around the neighborhood or just talking on my front porch before you went home and we would hear them out there along with various other things like the coyotes and so forth. And it's, yeah, that's kind of a cool sound. But uh, this, this didn't sound like that. It, you know, I had Renee try and imitate it but it yeah it was a sound it sounded like a person making a sound <laughs> like a like somebody giving a signal to somebody like the like the indian tribe is closing in on your cabin and they're signaling to each other and they're about to uh bust out the window and fill you full of arrows it, yeah, it was exactly like that, except for I'm not afraid of Indians, but I am afraid of, like, ghosts or witches. And it sounded like, yeah, witches giving each other signals kind of thing. I, I, witches. Sorry, I don't know. It, just, it was a creepy sound. And ultimately, I had to close the window because I, I was too disconcerted by hearing this hoo-hoo-hoo, hoo-hoo-hoo sound. It just, uh I, in retrospect, I wish I'd just gotten my recorder and gone out on the deck and been murdered. But it, it gotten a big bucket of water ready to throw on her so that she melted. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's oh so so yeah that I closed the window and you know I started going back to reading and then yeah I, I started thinking about it and thinking about uh, you know that I would tell you that I heard this sound and how freaked out I was by it. I mean, not I wasn't terrified, not enough to like cower under a blanket <laughs> or whatever. And like you are when you're a child. Right. Like, if I hide under the blanket, it can't get me. But enough that I was thinking about it and I thought, you know, I'm going to write a barbecue sketch about this. And, you know, every time we do one of these barbecue sketches, some people get together and they start to one-up each other of how tough their childhood was or how proud they are of their kid or, you know, how open-minded they are, or, you know. And, and I thought, well, I'm going to have people at a barbecue telling, you know, that story is nothing. This scary thing happened to me. And it's like, oh, that's nothing. This scary thing happened to me. And, yeah, ultimately it became three friends sitting around a campfire rather than at a barbecue. But it's still totally a barbecue sketch, just like the first one, which was the shoveling barbecue sketch you could have had them cooking hot dogs like on sticks and then it would have still been a barbecue mm. it would have fit in with the uh but yeah it definitely was yeah the shoveling one was the first one-upping shoveling match what did we call that one do you remember yeah i think it was shoveling match but now these stories these stories that you tell that they told <laughs> in this story these are all like personal experiences right these are not right i mean i, I recognize wait, 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 don't. one or two. Oh, of... okay so just leave it at that <laughs> two of the stories from the from this episode 
were, yes, things that actually happened to me. And the first one is, of course, the whoo-hoo-hoo, whoo-hoo-hoo. <laughs> but the other one, right. I'm not going to reveal. Uh, 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 Ooh, a mystery. Remind me in 2022, if we're still doing the show, some fan can write in or call in or whatever people use in that time. There may be mental implants by then. Uh, they can just think it in. And then I will reveal which of the other stories actually happened. And you may already know. I, I meant to talk to you about it. They can e-shunt it to you? That's right, the e-shunt. Good job. <laughs> That's a gross word, by the way. Uh, they can ask what announcer man's real name is and uh, which story was the one that actually happened to you. There you go. All right. 2022, folks. You already know, though, right? I believe that I do, yes. Okay. At this point, I, I feel like I've heard every one of your stories a couple of times. <laughs> because wow. we've been doing this show and uh, hanging out for hours around each show and et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, I, uh, for some reason, I thought all of the stories had happened to you. But yeah, there was only one really that I recognized. So I just figured the other ones were somehow ones I'd not heard before. <laughs> no, it was just me making them up. Uh, and yeah, the it got out of hand. It was. Uh, I think this is a much longer sketch than the barbecue sketches usually are. It ended up being almost exactly a half an hour. And I thought, well, that maybe that's too long, but I don't care. It's a special thing for Halloween, you know. Went a, a little bit above and beyond because of the holiday. Yeah, well, people deserve that on a holiday. We used to do 13 episodes for Halloween, so a 30-minute th barbecue sketch is uh, probably just as good. <laughs> well, see, I, I wonder, sometimes you and I are doing a show and I'll say, oh, hey, yeah, the audience may not know this, but uh, there was going to be a child actress that was going to voice a part on, on, our, on our show, and this is what happened with that. And then I'll be like, oh, wait, we've told that story before on the show. I'll cut <laughs> that part out. But then I, later I wonder, well, do they care if we repeat stories? I mean, unless they listened to that episode recently... I would think they don't even remember that there was a child actress. Yeah, and, it's probably true. Unless they're binge listening. And that she was going to voice a part for us. And, and her mother was going to leave her husband for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wonder, maybe the audience can tell us, is that something that bothers you if, if you hear the story again? Or is it kind of like a comedian that had told a joke years ago and they're like hey can you tell that joke again it really cracked me and my wife up you know when we first met you're a radio show guy and people call up and say hey can you tell that story of the, the disastrous junior prom picture and they're like oh yeah sure some of you may not have heard this but i'm going to tell it again yeah it's like you know having the comedy album eddie murphy delirious or whatever and you watch it again and again and chuckle at it i guess huh? Why would they sell you a videotape of it if it wasn't meant to be heard more than once? Well, no, I, I, I don't mean it that way. Because, yeah, I, I, I would love to hear that people listen to our shows over and over again. Somebody said that they listened to our I Shouldn't Have Said That episode like two or three times just because it was so freaking great. And, I, and that made me happy because it's like, wow, Big doesn't even listen to him once, let alone two or three times. Wow. That, I, I lived it. I didn't need to listen to it. But no, I, I didn't mean why would they listen again? It's just uh, if we said something in an episode three years ago and I want to tell that story again, usually I fight against that instinct. It's like, well, they could listen to that episode three years ago and find out about my uncle inappropriately touching me and but i don't know how many people that listen to this episode have listened to all the episodes or do people just sort of listen here and there is this somebody's first episode of the dunsty yeah it's like comic books every comic book is somebody's first comic book right that they used to say that i don't know that anybody reads comic books now yeah, that's probably true. They just watch the movies now. They don't need to bother with the books. 
more people <laughs> read comic books than listen to our show. But anyways, I assume that here and there there's somebody that listens and it's their first one and then they're like, oh, well, maybe this is worth going back and listening to the archive of. I always found that interesting because that would happen on occasion where we'd get comments from people who had binged on the show. You know, they'd gone back and they'd started at episode one or whatever and just listened straight on through. I've done that plenty with various shows. Uh, I have a tendency to do that. You know, you find a show and you're like, ooh, I like this show. And so you listen to it until you pretty much heard it all. Mm. And then you're like, okay, well, I guess I'm caught up. And then you're sad because you can only have like one new episode a week like everybody else. Like all the other schlubs (laughs) when you used to be king of the world because you could listen to an episode every day. Or two. two. Yeah, I've recently been listening to a podcast that they would do every week. I would listen to like two a day and sometimes... They would start out the show and be like, oh, hey, we apologize. You know, it's been a month since we've done an episode. Some things have been happening. Uh, You know, so-and-so moved and we just couldn't get together. And I was like, a month? It's been three minutes. (laughs) But yeah, somebody listening to our show might not know that uh, the length in between episodes is sometimes extraordinarily long. Yeah, they won't realize that there was that one time where we went six months without an episode. Then one day I looked at the thing and went, holy crap, it's been six months? <laughs> I am ashamed. Well, I'm I'm trying really hard to keep us going. Yeah. Uh, we have another story that we've purchased that may or may not be our next episode. But yeah, I, hopefully people are happy to hear that we're back. Yeah, we've been getting basically an episode a month so that's uh that's been nice feel like we're doing something at least i'm sure we'll never be back to an episode a week i don't know if we ever actually quite made it to that point but i think we did at least make three episodes a month for a while yeah it it was close to an episode a week we'd get to the end of the month and we'd want to post an episode and we and libsyn wouldn't let us yeah, because we'd used up we'd all used of our up allotted our space. space. That is never going to happen again. Probably not. But if something happened, and uh, it became something where there was a paycheck, and suddenly there was a benefit to doing as many episodes as possible, it would be fun to see how often we could do it. Like with my show, my solo podcast, I've tried doing one episode a week, and it's just it's not. Tenable. Is that the word that I'm looking for? Yeah, that's a word. It's just not feasible. One episode every like 10 days or so is about the most I can manage before it starts being like, oh, I have to have one done tomorrow. You know, that kind of thing. Right. But um, everybody's different. There are podcasts that are semi weekly. And it's like, yeah, every Tuesday and Friday we've got an episode. And you're just like, oh my gosh, really? Yeah, there are some that are daily. Daily. Can you imagine? I I, I can't. (laughs) I can't imagine a daily podcast. I I, I guess if that were your job. Yeah, it would have to be. I mean, I can imagine, kind of imagine a daily podcast because I do a daily news show. Several of them, for that matter. I urinate daily. Uh, Yeah, I do that too, I think. Pretty much. Oh my gosh, we're like brothers. Yes, we are brothers. So, but yeah, it would have to definitely be your job. You couldn't, you couldn't have a job and also a daily podcast. I don't think, unless you were you know, on some serious drugs. I don't know. Like you and I briefly worked together at the television station. If we had had the same shift every day, and we, you know, decided to come in an hour early or an hour late every day. It's possible that we would have podcast from there. I don't know. Yeah, it would have to have been an unedited, straight live kind of a thing, though. Oh, no, no, I, <laughs> I wasn't talking about doing a daily one, but, you know, something like that where we saw each other every day anyway. 
I could see us saying, well, yeah, we're going to record a little bit something every, each day this week. And I don't know. We've done daily marathons. And so I guess it is possible. It's just those are exhausting. And when we would do the 13 days of Halloween, I would always start like last week of August or first week of September, you know. Right. Yeah. You had to get them all uh, recorded ahead of time. But, we, you know, we edited them all. Most of the shows that I've seen that are daily are live. You know, they're like, okay, here we are. We're talking about this today. And they just do it live. They might have a thing or two that they, you know, edit it ahead of time. But for the most part, it's just them talking live. You know, I think that's the way it would have to be if that's what you wanted to do. Anyhow, I got us, I got us off topic, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, I... We're hardly ever on top. We're hardly ever on. Much less topic. You know, I, I can't say enough nice things about Renee Chambliss. So I won't in this episode. Instead, I'm going to say nice things about you. When I wrote this, I was just like, gosh, holy crap, this is long. The only way that this will work is if the dialogue is is delivered really fast and like... Each person that has their story that they want to tell can't wait to get their story out. And it's just like, will you end your story so that I can tell my story kind of thing? And mm -hmm. I knew Renee would be up to the challenge and I knew I would be up to the challenge. And I said to you beforehand, you know, I, I think you're up to the challenge. It's going to be hard because you had never read it and Renee <laughs> had never read it. So you were performing this thing as soon as you saw it. And to me, that's a real accomplishment. That is something that not a lot of people could do. So, uh, yeah, you guys are at a professional level, I think, of performing, of voice talent. And so thank you for uh, bringing this to life in a way that, uh, that other people might not have been able to pull off. Well, Renee... It definitely is a professional. I mean, she actually does voice acting for a living, which I think is really cool. I don't know. We talked a little bit about it when we were on the line with her as we did the, the show. Because, you know, way back when we first met her, uh, Brian Lincoln, I think, did a story and brought her in because he'd listened to a patio book that she had done of her own. You know, she wrote a book. And then did a audio reading, a podio book of it. And he'd listened to it and thought, wow, this woman has a great voice. We've got to use her. And so he used her in the story, which I believe it was called This Must Be the Place. And uh, gosh, I remember when I heard it, I thought, wow, this, this woman's voice is amazing. It makes our show sound so much more professional than it really is. <sighs> I guess Brian and, you know, all of us, we, we can recognize talent when we hear it. And, yeah, she's gone on to, to do this professionally. Yeah, I mean, she she has a contract with, I don't know who. Tantor Audio. Is that what it is? I was going to say uh, Harlequin Romance. <laughs> I think she does mostly romance novels. I guess that's mostly what is written when it comes down to it. What, what, why um, is that, Big? Uh, because men don't read, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, she does this for a living now and she actually took time out of her schedule of reading books into a microphone to read our story into a microphone, which was really cool. It was nice. I know how it feels. It's funny. Cause it, like I made, I tried to make like movies with my kids. Like I, I did a, a movie with my son when he was six probably he's 18 now i still haven't edited it <laughs> just <sighs> when you put it that way you sound like a giant loser <laughs> can you put it a different way <laughs> it's the last thing that you want to do on your time off you know what i mean when that's your job and then you come home and you got to just do your job again it's like you don't want to do it i'm sure like a guy who mows lawns for a living probably has the worst yard on the block because he's just like, no, I'm not mowing the lawn today. I don't care. I'm just going to sit here and watch TV. 
I, I really got to thank Renee for, for doing that, for taking the time and for, you know, submitting to, <laughs> to doing the thing that she does for a living for us for free. Oh, that's a good point. I hope she had fun at yeah, least. She should be charging at this point and she's not. Seriously, she did a great job. And uh, it's nice of you to say that, you know, I'm at a professional level. I'm obviously not doing it professionally. I don't know if I have quite the right voice for it. Generally, uh, people aren't keen to have their audiobooks read by Kermit the Frog. <laughs> but we were but, just talking uh, today that you could have been an anchor, a news anchor. And a lot of times they just yeah, there's no rehearsal or anything like that. It, the 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 preparation that these anchors do for the show is hair and makeup. <laughs> and then they sit down and there's a teleprompter and I don't know if everybody does it but on our station there was also a printout of all the to the day's script in front of them in case the teleprompter went out and they just did it live. Yeah. And they had to have a certain level of spontaneity of, of being able to ad lib and get it right the first time because news was effing live. Yeah. And push through if you didn't. If you screwed something up, just fix it. I was talking to a news anchor just yesterday and I, we've done this before. But again, I, I don't know if people are ir irritated by hearing the same goddamn stories again and again or whether they <laughs> love it. It's like, oh, it's the same goddamn story. Great. Yay. But I friggin' hated that news was live. Oh, my gosh. The tension and the, the stress of, okay, it's live and I, I haven't got the last story edited or the game has not yet ended and I'm going to have to get this thing edited as soon as the game ends in time for sports. I was talking to that anchor yesterday and I was just like, well, why, why does it have to be live? And he's like, well, because, you know, it's breaking news and, oh, the standoff happens at 530 and you got to find out what happened if you're on at six. And I was just like, no, 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 no. What about a two minute delay or something like that? So that if something goes terribly wrong, you can fix it and it doesn't go live on the air. And he's like, well, that's just not the way that news works. And, and I was just like, yes, but every single newscast has a YouTube edit of their bloopers because news is live <laughs> and I can get and I didn't tell him this but I can guarantee that you are on it because <laughs> news is live I don't get that it really bothered me at the time and it bothers me more now yeah I mean it's tough it's uh, something you got to get used to but it's kind of I mean it's close to what we did with this story we just we did it. I mean, we didn't straight push through because I know I screwed stuff up. And I was like, oh, I, I want to say this a, a little bit differently. And so I would do it again. Sometimes, and yeah, that's one of the hard things about the way we do it now. Because now that I'm in Houston and you're not, I used to be sitting next to you. And I could be like, oh, here, let me do that again. Or you would look at me and be like, you better do that again. But yeah, now sometimes it's hard to get you guys to stop because, you know, I'll say my line and then I'll be like, uh, I didn't like that. But by that point, we're already like three lines further down the story. And I'm like, hey, hey, I uh, I just want to say that that my last line again. I feel like a jerk. I'm like, I'm, I'm slowing us down, ruining the, the whole flow. But uh, well, but yeah, I don't know. We used to talk, or you used to talk, and I'd just, I would check my phone, about us doing a radio show, and it's like, oh, well, maybe we could get on radio and, and do stories and stuff there, and we'd sort of do what we do on the Doonstief, only we'd do it live on the radio, and I have no idea what a live episode of the Doonstief would be. Even when we did it at the New Media Expo in front of a, an audience, I still did a pass, an editing pass on those before we put them out on the feed just because I, I don't know. Why wouldn't you? Because it's so much more work to edit. That's why wouldn't you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I can see that. But The people that put out the daily podcasts or whatever, they don't give a fudge that they say, um, 206 times in a 10 minute <laughs> episode. 
but I do. Right. Like on my Rish Outcast, I say, uh, you know, like 70 times in, in a single episode. And I hate that, you know? <laughs> um, I do know. I, there's, as far as I know, there's one episode of That Gets My Goat that we released unedited. And I've never heard it, so it's like it's like you for every episode. But I would hate to hear that because you know, um, uh, has to be throughout the whole gosh darn thing. And I just that maybe the audience doesn't even notice. In which case, well, I've been wasting a lot of time. <laughs> but at least you have those those a uh, couple of uh, compilations that you've made where you took all the ums and uhs and put them at the end of the show for fun. So you have that to show for it, at least. Those are those are always fun. Uh, oh my sp- um, uh, um, uh, uh, I, um, um, uh, 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 you know, you know, up, uh, um, up, uh, um, uh, just uh, and uh, 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 um, uh, 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 um, up, yeah, up, um, uh, uh, um, uh. Well, I think that's it. That's all I've got to say. I just, I, I mean, if you want to talk a little bit more about the news, that's cool. We got off track because I was trying to compliment you. I think that you pulled this off very, very well. And it was something I realized as we first started is that the character that I play and the character that you play were switched at some point. Yeah, you were saying that, that it's transposed in the middle. You were supposed to be the guy that was making fun of me for not getting the fire started. And I was like, well, the wood was wet. And you're like, yeah, that's your excuse for everything. I was supposed to be the guy that couldn't make a fire, and you were the guy that was mocking me. I was supposed to be the dumb guy who had never heard of Friends, the TV series. But, you know, we did it live-ish, and so... We did it live! (laughs) Yeah, it was too late to fix... And it doesn't matter. It's just there are certain jokes that work better with your voice in my head. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) There were certain parts with you, you know, making out with your cousin. Certain ones that just work better as a a Kermit the Frog voice as opposed to a Fozzie the Bear voice. (laughs) Well, is Fozzie? That's not right, is it? Fozzie is still kind of high pitched, isn't he? Waka waka waka. Fozzie was Frank Oz, so Rolf the dog. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, of. okay. Was he? he yeah, he, that was much more like Jim Henson's real voice, much right? More like a Rish Outfield. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> Rolf the dog had a deeper and gravelier voice. Oh, there you go. Hey, we found a second impression you can do. <laughs> Dude, I haven't heard Rolf the dog's voice in like 20 years, so I have the slightest idea if that's even close or not. But next time we sing I Got You, Babe, I'll do it as Rolf the dog. How's that sound? (laughs) That's never going to happen. Exactly. That's one of those things. We've done that in an episode. You can listen to that episode if you want to hear that again. We'll never do it again. There you go. Yeah, we won't tell that story a second time. <laughs> All right. I think we've uh, we've said our piece, and I just noticed that the low battery light just started flashing on my recorder, so maybe we better uh, wrap this oh, up. Oh, no. Maybe I should have uh, plugged my <laughs> recorder into the computer. Oh, well, it's too late for that now. It's flashing a lot. So I'm going to just wrap it up and say thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you had a happy Halloween. And uh, I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rish Out. Whoa, hey, did you hear that? What? What is that? I think there's someone in the room with us. And I'm an outer man. (laughs) Ah! (sighs) That was creepy. (laughs) All right, good night. See you, folks. The Dune Steve is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. So you can give it to anyone, but you can't sell or change the files. At the Dune Steve, we pay our authors as well as our own bills for the website maintenance and the like. So if you're ever in a generous mood, or even if you're not, we'd love it if you donate. 
Just press the button on the website to donate $5 a month, a quarter, or choose your own one-time donation amount. Take two. We're only telling scary stories, true stories about things that go perfect with a night like this. Oh, sorry. Damn you. <laughs> Started. <laughs> That's the one I was thinking of when you were telling me the story before the. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that one all the time on cartoons and stuff. Well, yeah, I think it's a little bit like that, but it didn't sound like a a, a, a bird. It sounds like a person. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Sounds like a tribe of Indians is closing in around your cabin, and they're <laughs> they're making bird calls to each other to be able to keep apprised <laughs> of each other's position. Yeah, in a movie, that's exactly what it would be. <laughs> right before they attack. But I'm not scared of Indians. I'm scared of witches and stuff like that. So, uh, of course, that's what my mind thought it would be. (laughs) Well, and by yourself, too, out in the woods. Yeah, it's surprising that you ever do that. But you actually do it a lot. So even more surprising. I'm trying to be a writer. I just fail. Trying to be a man. (laughs) And Yes, I really (laughs) fail. Anything else we need to say before we jump into the story? No, I just want to thank you, Renee Chambliss, and should I thank Marshall Latham? F that guy. Uh, no, I'm asking you. He shows up <laughs> at the very end. Do I? Just leave the cast list stuff for after. Sure, okay. Uh, I am Gerald, and uh, Big, you want to be Carrie? I will be Carrie. Underwood? Okay. Mariah. And uh, is is progressively scarier stories or increasingly scarier stories a better title? Hmm. Scarier and scarier stories. Yeah, I, I could just call it scarier stories to tell in the dark, but I just wanted the competitiveness to come. See, progressively scarier. Uh-huh. I think it's progressively scarier. Scary. Progressively more scary? I don't know. For some reason, that, that doesn't seem right to say progressively scarier. I don't know why. That just suddenly looks wrong to me, but maybe I'm not. Maybe it is right. The only thing is progressive has kind of a political connotation to it. Ah, that's but... true. And we did do a B progressive, B, B progressive sketch once. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That yeah. was that one. Maybe it can just be your theme. Different kind of progressive here. Anyway, it turns out it was an owl. Owls say... I was going to make that a question. It shouldn't be a question, though. No, it's not a question. Owls say who? Owls say who? No, no, no. No, owls say who? You're correct. You're, like, her. informing me. You're mansplaining. Oh, oh, I'm, oh okay. <laughs> owls say who? Funny thing is, afterward, it sort of made sense. No, don't. Once no, I found don't, don't out. Do it as, this is just like, <laughs> you're just barely putting two and two together all okay, these years I'm just, later. I'm, okay, but I'm not supposed to. You're not I'm trying to be scary. Quietly. Us. This is scaring you. Because I'm trying not to ruin the uh, spooky atmosphere is all. I'm just not being as loud. I went fist. What is it with the names in this story? <laughs> <laughs> we got Bulgaria Burton and now it's Maricino Moretta. Uh, is it Maraschino or Maraschino, should I say? Uh, I, th- wherever Renee lives, they speak English correctly. So uh, wh- however she says So it, it is Maraschino. I think, it, well, if you want to do it correctly, I think it's Maraschino, but I don't know for sure. I just wanted to make sure. It's your story. Yeah. You're the man. All right. <sighs> Who the hell's named Maraschino is the real question. <laughs> this is worse than Budicofer. <laughs> Hey, nothing's worse than Butico. <laughs> Listening to Enrique Iglesias' songs. Remember him? Oh. Okay, we're saying this in, in a positive way or a negative way? Positive way? A, yes, a, a very po- a creepily positive okay. way. <laughs> oh, I remember. Oh, I remember. You want to hear a really scary story? I just saw the world's most giant spider go down my monitor on my computer. 
Where did it go? <laughs> I don't know if it was a spider. It may have been some other kind of bug. I also saw something fly away. But it was huge. What the heck well, you are in Texas. That? Oh, my gosh. It was a huge bug. <laughs> well, good. It's to get you in the, the proper Halloween mood. And it was just crawling down the side of my monitor. And, the, and it, I swear I thought I saw it jump off and, like, use a web to like rappel down or whatever all right sorry let me hopefully it's not gonna get me <laughs> me too more scared i'm more scared than both of you oh yeah i'm about to pee my <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry i just laughed because of the uh... The endless one-upping. I'm more scared than both of you. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah? I'm about to pee my pants here. Well, I'm about prairie dogging it here. <laughs> this is a term I'm not familiar with. <laughs> but I can get the uh, idea. It's very descriptive. Yeah. Uh, okay, I get... <laughs> I gotta get myself stopped laughing before I try to say this. <laughs> Think about that spider. There's a spider lurking. You're scared. Oh, shoot. I wasn't recording. No way. I knew it. <laughs> I pressed the button. You're listening to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. 